Thank you. Good afternoon. The Senate Committee on Natural Resources will now come to order. Members and presenters, please remember to mute your microphone when you are not speaking. At this time, will our secretary please proceed to call the roll? Senator Brooks. Here. Senator Goikachia. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. Senator Scheibel. Here. Chair Donate. And I am here. Thank you. Uh, welcome everyone to the Senate Committee on Natural Resources. Now, for anyone who has not participated in these virtual legislative meetings yet, I will go ahead and quickly explain how virtual committee meetings are being conducted for the 2021 legislative session. As you know, the building right now is closed to the public, so all committee meetings will be held virtually, meaning that committee members, staff, and everyone else will participate either through Zoom video conference or by telephone. However, there are various ways that members of the public can engage with us and participate throughout this entire process. As in previous sessions, all committee related information is available on the Nevada Electronic Legislative Information System, commonly referred to as NELIS, which is accessible from the legislature's website. There are four main ways that you can engage with our committee, which includes registering to participate in a committee meeting through the new NELIS system, which places you in line to testify on a bill or provide public comment during the meeting. You can also submit written testimony to the committee's email address, share your opinion via the legislature's opinion application on Nellis or view committee meetings online through Nellis or on the legislature's YouTube channel. To testify on a bill or provide public comment during the 2021 legislative session, members of the public must first register for the meeting that you would like to participate in. Committee meetings are listed in several places on Nellis. To, to register, simply click on the participate button near the meeting date and time, and you will receive a confirmation screen with the details provided. Just as a note that while meeting registration is required to participate, it does not guarantee you a spot to speak. And similar to previous sessions, testimony and public comment may be limited due to time constraints. When you are on the phone line, please pay attention to which bill is being considered when bills are listed on the meeting's agenda and follow verbal prompts provided by broadcast and production services so that you know which keys to press and when to unmute yourself. Detailed instructions for participating in committee meetings can also be available on the help page, which is listed at every top at the banner of every top page on Nellis. And if you ever need any assistance with any of these processes, or if you'd simply like to receive an electronic notification of the committee's agendas and minutes, always feel free to please contact our committee manager at the committee email listed on the agenda. Today, the committee will be hearing the work session on SJR 3 and SJR 10, and then we will proceed with hearing uh, with the hearing on SB 344. I would like to remind everyone that we will not be taking testimony at the work session. However, I may call on someone as necessary to answer questions from committee members. We will go ahead and begin with Senate Joint Resolution 3, which urges Congress to provide funding to reduce the wild horse and rural populations to appropriate management levels. First, I would like to point out that in addition to the work session document, an amendment received by the American Wild Horse Campaign has been uploaded to Nellis this afternoon. This is the amendment that I would like Ms. Rudy to work from. Uh, our policy analyst, Jennifer Rudy, will be walking us through the work session. Ms. Rudy, please proceed when you are ready. Thank you, Chair Donate. This is Jennifer Rudy, Committee Policy Analyst. And as LCB staff, I can either advocate for or oppose legislation, but I will be walking you through Senate Joint Resolution and Senate Joint Resolution 10, sorry, 3 and 10. The uh, Senate Joint, Joint Resolution 3 urges the United States Congress to provide funding to reduce the wild horse and borough populations to appropriate management levels. The Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act of 1971 directed the BLM and the U.S. Forest Service to determine in consultation with wildlife agencies the appropriate management level, what's commonly referred to as the AML of free roaming horses and burrows to retain a thriving natural ecological balance of the habitat forage and water needs of wildlife, livestock and free roaming horses and burrows through the assessment of plant and riparian sustainability. Once over the appropriate management level, numbers of free roaming horses and burrows were defined as excess to the carrying capacity of the land. In order to assist in achieving the thriving natural ecological balance mandate, the BLM and the US Forest Service should remove excess free roaming horses and burrows by making them available for adoption or placing them in short-term or long-term holdings, such as lifetime pastures or treating them with fertility inhibitors and returning them to public lands. Um, in 2019, wildlife and livestock welfare organizations, including the Humane Society of the United States and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty, 
two animals collaboratively created a crafted a plan, the path forward for management of BLM's wild horses and burrows, proposing a pathway to reduce green roaming horse and burrow populations to the appropriate management level using non-lethal methods. The underpinnings of this plan became part of the BLM's 2020 report to Congress. The work session document says there are no proposed amendments for Senate Joint Resolution 3. However, as the chair did note this morning, um, or just now, sorry, there was an amendment submitted that has been uploaded to Nellis, and it should say SJR 3 amendment. Um, this was, as the chair just explained, provided by the American Wild Horse Campaign, and it amends the language in um, the resolved by the Senate and Assembly of the State of Nevada jointly that statement that the members of the 81st session of the Nevada legislature support the instead of all of that language uh, referencing the BLM's um, 2020 report is stricken and replaced with support the humane and science based management of Nevada's wild free roaming horse and burrow populations. And then again in the next um, paragraph where it starts resolved. Uh, that given the impacts of excess free roaming horses and burrows on our fragile Great Basin and Mojave ecosystems, the members of the 81st session of the Nevada legislature support reducing excess free roaming horses and burrows. And then that language is stricken where it now says using non-lethal means and prioritizing humane fertility control as recommended by the National Academy of Sciences. And then again, the within six years is stricken. Those are the only changes proposed with this amendment. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Rudy. Any questions for uh, Ms. Rudy at this time? Senator Hansen. Actually, it's not for Ms. Rudy. You want me to wait, um, Mr. Chair? Yeah, if you would like to forward, we can proceed once we make the motion. If you're look, are you looking for a discussion before we proceed to the? Well, well, yeah, actually, on, honestly, I just got to read the amendment. You know, it just got dropped. So. And uh, frankly, some folks that I have a great deal of confidence in are highly worried about the amendment. So what I would like to do, Chair, rather than propose that we amend it, uh, I'd like to see it passed in the absence of the amendment, because uh, the amendment literally changes the whole focus of, it drops the whole concept of the uh, uh, proper management levels. So I apologize. I know you talked to me very briefly before, but I literally just got to read the amendment. So. What I'd like, Chair, if you would, is is postpone this to the next meeting or uh, entertain a motion to pass as originally proposed by the Public Lands Committee. Uh, thank you, Senator Hansen. Do we have any other questions from any other committee members at this time? Okay. Um, if you ask one minute recess, please.
Uh, BPS, I'm I'm ready whenever you are. Chair, you may continue your meeting. Thank you so much. Um, Senator Hansen, to address your concerns, um, after reviewing the amendment, I think that I would be comfortable with moving forward with that. Um, I do want to mention really quickly that the amendment came and proposed uh, in collaboration with the American Wild Horse Campaign, but also uh, with Representative Titus's office. Um, there is a campaign already to help uh, support the prioritization of fertility control, which, as we know, would be helpful to solve some of the concerns that we're seeing right now. So I would ask that we can probably that we can uh, I would ask my members at this time uh, for a motion for amend do pass. So do I have uh, Chair, Senator, Senator Brooks had a question, Chair. Oh, uh, Senator Brooks. Uh, thank you, Chair Donati. And um, I uh, well, I um, really think that it was a more effective bill uh, or sent a more effective language unamended. And um, I think that there's many methods that we should be using as a nation and a, and a state to, to um, help manage the, these numbers. Um, I also understand the realities of, of how negotiations work. And there's very advocate, there's very passionate advocates on, 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 on both sides of this issue. And so um, I, I will um, support uh, the moving forward of this as amended, um, but uh, uh, do um, want to make sure that I put on the record that I, I thought it was just fine how it was and uh, and I reserved my my right to uh, change my mind. But I, I definitely want to um, see it move forward and keep keep it uh, keep it going. So uh, I, I, I will be supporting it as amended, um, but um, I might be talking to you later. Thank you, Senator Brooks. Do we have any questions or do we have any motions at this time? I have a motion. Chair, to amend and do pass. Um, I have read the amendment thoroughly, and I do believe that it is better policy than what was um, put forth in the original bill or the original re resolution. I understand the changes that it makes um, and that it utilizes a different benchmark and a different scientific tool to um, determine or encourages Congress to use a different scientific tool to manage wild horse populations. I think it is a more humane tool. That's why I prefer it. And so I will uh, make a motion to amend and do pass. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Scheibel. So we have a motion to amend and do pass. Do we have a second? We have a seconded from Senator Brooks. Uh, do we have any questions or discussion? Senator Gorkachia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I hope my mic is working okay, or do I need to unmute? Are you hearing me fine? Okay. I, and again, I will support the measure to get it out of here. I, you know, we need to get it moving. I'm Hopefully we can get some of this fixed when we get to the assembly side. My real concern is not addressing the, uh, the fertility control. Clearly there are mechanisms in place that needs to happen. We've got to understand that we've got 50,000 head of horses you're not going to reduce them by with fertility control. Some of these horses have to come on off to get to that level where you can main, maintain a sustainable population. And the other thing that really concerns me, they took the language out in this amendment, uh, which is the, the Bureau of Land Management's 2020 report to Congress. This was all hinged on this. The, the Humane Society and everybody came together and supplied that report to Congress, and we took it out. I, are they that fearful? of facts. So I will support it. I want to, I'm reserved my right to change my vote on the floor, but uh, I, I do think we need to move. We've got to get some bills going someplace. So let's move something. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gorkich. Mr. Uh, Chair. Senator Hansen. Just a, just a comment uh, on the discussion on the motion. I'm going to kind of take the opposite approach to Senator Gorkich. I'm going to vote no. I mean, we, we discussed this at length at public lands uh, and they, they had all, and it was a unanimous vote. The whole thing, as Senator Gokichia said, is based around the 2020 BLM report. Now we're taking that out of the of, of this. I mean, it, it essentially changes it. I do completely support the concept of the idea going forward. I mean, this is just a resolution to Congress. I understand 
and I know that those, frankly, don't carry much weight in Congress. Um, but I, but I am a little concerned because public lands did have a great deal of in-depth uh, discussions about it. It was unanimous, and now we're kind of at the very last second doing a change, based apparently on on Congresswoman Titus's uh, opposition. I mean, I didn't hear her testify ever on public land, so I'm very concerned that the that the legislature would essentially cave what has been a long drawn out process at the very last second to please somebody that didn't get involved at all from the get go. So I'll be a, I'll be a no. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator Hansen. Uh, any other remarks before we proceed? And I do just really want to quickly mention that I did contact uh, and spoke with Senator Parks about this proposed amendment and he was uh, fine as is. So I hope that eases some of the concerns that we have heard. Um, but I do agree with some of the sentiments that have been uh, faced. And I do think that for this situation, we do have to lead um, with science and that uh, facts and science. So hopefully that's something that retains the conversation throughout these next few years. Um, so let's go ahead and if the secretary can please proceed to call the roll, the roll call vote. Senator Brooks? Yes. Senator Goikachia? Yes. Senator Hansen? No. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Chair Donate? And I am a yes. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rudy, uh, please proceed with Senate Jordan Resolution 10, which, uh, uh, and before I proceed with that, um, I will go ahead and uh, take care of the floor statement on SBR 3. Ms. Rudy, uh, please proceed with Senate Joint Resolution 10, which urges Congress to protect the public lands, including the adjacent to uh, Sunrise Mountain, Frenchman Mountain, and Rainbow Gardens. Thank you, Chair Donate. This is Jennifer Rudy, Committee Policy Analyst. Um, Senate Joint Resolution 10 does not have any amendments on it. Um, it urges the United States Congress to protect the public lands, including and adjacent to Sunrise Mountain, Frenchman Mountain, and Rainbow Gardens in Clark County. Several plant species that have received special status designation by the Bureau of Land Management are found on these public lands, and many Nevada residents enjoy the natural desert landscape and the outdoor recreational opportunities of the area. The measure urges Congress to designate the specified lands for federal protection, which may include without limitation designating all or portions of the area as a national conservation area, national recreation area, or national monument, or applying other federal protections that Congress deems appropriate for these important and scenic lands. There were no amendments again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Rudy. Uh, do committee members, do we have any questions on SJR 10? Mm -hmm. Senator Brooks. Move to pass. Thank you, Chair Donate. Uh, no questions. I just wanted to let you know how much I enjoyed the, the uh, bill presentation and uh, how educational it was. And just really good to see those advocates and, and, and learn so much about something that's in right down the street from my house, you know? And, and I, it, what a resource that I did, didn't even realize existed right, right in my own. So thank you for, for the hearing and bringing this bill forward. Thank you, Senator Brooks. And I think we got a motion from uh, Senator Gokajia to uh, do pass SDR 10. Do I have a seconded? Second. Second from Senator Hansen. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions or any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, will the secretary please call the roll call vote? Senator Brooks? Yes. Senator Goikachia? Yes. Senator Hansen? Yes. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Chair Donate? And I am a yes. And if it's okay, I'm gonna go ahead and assign this floor statement to uh, Senator Brooks. If that's good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, um, let me pull back my notes. Uh, or actually, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll give the floor statement to Senator Orenshaw, uh, who will handle SVR 10. Sorry about that, Senator Brooks. Um, thank you, committee. All right, I think we're ready to proceed with our bill presentation. So I will go ahead and open the hearing on SB uh, 344. This measure enacts provisions relating to the importation, possession, sale, transfer, and breeding of dangerous wild animals. Uh, I believe we have at least four pres uh, presenters today for SB 344. We have Senator Orenshaw, uh, Warren Hardy, Jeff Dixon, and 
Lisa Wayne. Uh, so, Senator Orenshaw, uh, please proceed when you are ready. It looks like you might be having some technical difficulties. Uh, BPS, uh, two minute recess, please. Absolutely, Chair. now can you go on camera there okay you're ready Thank you, Chair Donate, members of the Senate Natural Resources Committee. You're good. I'm yeah. sorry. I think we've resolved the problem. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, BPS, we're ready to go uh, back from recess. You're good to go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Senator Orenshaw, please proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Donate, members of the Senate Committee on Natural Resources. Uh, for the record, my name is James Orenshaw. I represent State Senate District 21, that's parts of Henderson and unincorporated Clark County. Uh, thank you for hearing Senate Bill 344 today. Many of you may remember hearing about an incident in central Ohio nearly a decade ago when someone alerted law enforcement of a fully grown male lion on his property. On October the 18th, 2011, a local man who owned a hobbyist exotic animal farm in Zanesville, Ohio, committed suicide after he released from their enclosures 50 of the 56 animals on his property. Animal control and local Zanesville law enforcement officers were met at the scene with a situation that they were not equipped to handle. Tranquilizers were not able to uh, handle the 18 Bengal tigers and 17 lions, as well as several bears, mountain lions, wolves, a baboon, and a monkey. The officers were forced to use lethal force to gain control over most of these fleeing and very afraid animals. In total, 48 animals were killed. This case and others around the country illustrate the need for comprehensive regulation and awareness when it comes to exotic animal ownership. Much like Nevada today, 10 years ago, Ohio law allowed for private citizens to keep large exotic animals with little to no regulation or oversight. The state of Ohio responded to that terrible tragedy by strictly regulating the ability to privately keep large exotic animals. According to the University of Michigan's Animal Legal and Historical Center, Ohio is now among 20 states with comprehensive bans on the ownership of dangerous wild animals, with certain exceptions. These laws may prohibit the ownership of wild or exotic animals as pets or only allow those animals to be kept under certain licenses. Another 13 states have partial bans on exotic pets, which means these states prohibit specific animal species listed by statute as to private ownership. Meanwhile, 14 states permit private ownership of exotic animals under a licensure or a permit model. Those seeking licenses might need to register with the state or local government and prove satisfactory conditions for the keeping of such animals, pay a fee, or maintain liability insurance. Nevada, like four other states, 
has very few provisions and oversight regarding exotic and dangerous animals. Chair Donate, members of the committee, I believe that Senate Bill 344 is legislation that is long overdue. And I, I do, you are going to hear from some presenters who will, I believe, make a very strong case for its enactment. There are other stakeholders that we are working with, and I believe that there will be uh, some amendments that need to be added to the bill. But the bottom line is that exotic animals are inherently dangerous. And I don't think any of us want our law enforcement officers, firefighters, or other first responders to, to encounter a situation like what happened in Ohio about a decade ago. Uh, today, you're gonna hear testimony about threats that these animals can cause to communities, either due to their great strength or through diseases they're capable of spreading. We'll also hear from animal owners who say they, they, they feel differently and that uh, you know, they know how to take care of these, these creatures. While that may be true, that does not mean that the next owner will be a responsible owner to one of these exotic or dangerous animals. Nor does it mean that his or her neighbor knows what an animal in the home next door that is properly secured and won't get out. An exotic dangerous animal living in your neighborhood is like a ticking time bomb. It's not a question of if someone's going to be hurt, but when. Of course, we should all be concerned about the welfare of these animals. Most private citizens are not equipped to properly take care of these animals or to handle an unfortunate incident or escape or an attack. If we wanna have exotic dangerous animals in our homes, there need to be some minimum requirements which are covered in this legislation. This bill protects the good work of our animal shelters and rescue centers, allows for the ownership of these animals by properly licensed exhibitors and permits ownership or possession by the Department of Wildlife and certain licensed veterinarians. Finally, it is important to note that this bill does not completely remove exotic animals from private homes. Rather, these owners are grandfathered in as long as they meet minimum requirements. Chair Donate, with your permission, I would like to turn it over to state, former state Senator Warren Hardy and to the other presenters, and then I'm happy to answer any questions if, if, uh, if there are any. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, Warren Hardy representing the Humane Society of the United States. I want to thank you and the committee for uh, being uh, your willingness to hear this important piece of legislation again. Uh, we've been here before. I think uh, Chair Donante is probably the only one that hasn't uh, uh, folks uh, addressed this issue before, so we look forward to his participation. I, I especially want to thank my senator, uh, Senator Orenshaw, for, for bringing this legislation forward. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, be a part of his district. Um, so this issue, as I indicated before, has been before the legislature a number of times. We fine-tuned it. Uh, we worked hard on it. We, when we first started this a couple of sessions ago, we called it the Tiger in the Basement Law. Um, and then something uh, happened, or something was produced called the Tiger King. So I think maybe we'll start calling it the Tiger King bill because I, I think that more than anything, that illustrates the reason for this bill. And, and, uh, and there's been other documentaries that have shown the incident in Ohio that Senator Orenshaw is talking about here. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, we've worked very hard with the stakeholders. We've spent a lot of time with both state and local law enforcement, uh, with the Department of Wildlife, uh, and most importantly, uh, well, not most important, just as importantly with business and the gaming community. In Nevada, Nevada is unique, as you know, Mr. Chair. Nothing. Uh, everything's a little bit different here because of our number, our number one industry, and that applies here as well. So we've worked carefully to craft language in a way uh, that allows them to continue their legitimate operations um, unfettered uh, uh, by, uh, by overregulation. Um, so after all these years, Mr. Chairman, we, we have this bill fine-tuned. It's absolutely perfect and ready for presentation, except for the amendment we're preparing. Um, so I guess I should never say that this is ever going to be perfect, but we, as recently as, as this morning, we met with the uh, representatives of the gaming industry. We will, as Senator Orenshaw indicated, be coming back with an amendment. We understand the time restraints on that, and we'll move quickly to, to get that to the committee. Uh, there's also a new two-thirds requirement that's in the bill that hasn't been there in the past. Uh, I, I spoke with council yes, uh, legislative council yesterday. We know why it's in there and are going to work towards removing that. 
um, because that's not been in, in there in the past. And as Senator Orenshaw pointed out, for me, you know, one of the most important things going on in this legislation is the fact that Nevada has the weakest laws with regard to the, these these animals in in the in the United States, certainly in the in the Western United States. And as a result of that, when that happens, uh, we've seen this on other issues we've dealt with. When that happens, we become the the center of those kind those kinds of activities, uh, as people as bad actors uh, move towards the the path of least resistance. So. Mr. Chairman, if, it's, if, it, if it pleases the chair, I'd like to turn it over to Lisa Watney, who is our subject matter expert from the Humane Society of the United States, to explain the bill, uh, and then to our state director, many of you know, uh, Jeff Dixon, uh, the director, state director of the Humane Society of the United States. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, is my audio working okay? Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Madam Vice Chair, and members of the committee. My name is Lisa Watney, and I am Manager of Captive Wildlife Protection for the Humane Society of the United States. Thank you for hearing Senate Bill 344 and for the opportunity to provide our comments in support of the bill. SB 344 only applies to activities involving a specific and limited list of dangerous wild animals including big cats, bears, hyenas, elephants, wolves, and primates. And it does three simple things. First, the bill will ban private possession of these wild animals. Um, as Senator Ornschild said, keeping dangerous wild animals as pets puts communities and first responders at risk. Um, it often has devastating animal welfare consequences, and it's detrimental to legitimate conservation efforts. Yet Nevada is one of the very few states that has virtually no laws regarding this issue. Um, again, it's important to note that the bill does have a grandfather clause. Anyone who currently possesses these species as pets will be able to keep them, um, keep the animals they already have. They simply cannot uh, breed or acquire, otherwise acquire more of these animals. And in addition, they must meet some very basic public safety and animal welfare requirements, including maintaining liability insurance and an emergency plan in the event of an animal escape. And they can, cannot have convictions for animal abuse or revocation of an animal-related license. Next. All zoos and other U.S. Department of Agriculture licensed exhibitors can continue to have big cats, bears, et cetera, and they can acquire more of these animals as long as they also comply with some requirements that go above and beyond the very minimal regulations they are bound by by the USDA. These include liability insurance, emergency plans, and no USDA citations within the previous three years for violations that jeopardized the um, jeopardized a dangerous wild animal's health and well-being or the public safety. And finally, S SB 344 will prohibit public contact with these specific dangerous wild animals. The use of baby tigers, lions, bears, and primates for public photo ops and play sessions is a horribly cruel industry that directly contributes to the exotic animal trade, as well as ultimately endangers the public and creates a burden for law enforcement and the sanctuary community. SB 344 is a sound and very reasonable framework for improving animal welfare and public safety in Nevada. And we ask that you please support this important bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. I believe we still have Mr. Dixon who would like to present. So please proceed. Yes. This is Jeff Dixon. I'm the Nevada State Director for the Humane Society of the United States. Thank you, Chair Doniate, Vice Chair Scheibel, and members of the Committee on Natural Resources. Um, 
so some of you may watch the top, Warren mentioned the popular Netflix series Tiger King last year and although it wasn't show, the show's intent um, it did raise awareness about the plight of captive big cats uh, and expose the hidden suffering associated with a practice called cub petting. Um, it also highlighted why SB 3344 is the least that Nevada can do to help uh, address this issue. Um, it doesn't go quite as far as addressing everything you saw in Tiger King. Um, you know, that was a USDA accredited facility. So you're going to see a lot of continuity, but you're not going to see people who had, um, if it passes, you're not going to see people who had previous violations uh, interacting with these animals. Um, the reason there are so many big cats, especially tigers, in the hands of unqualified individuals in the U.S. is because of a practice called cub petting. Cub petting programs provide baby big cats, usually tigers, for the public to feed, play, pet, and pose with. For years, this has been a common practice at roadside zoos and exhibitors who haul the tiger and lion cubs to fairs, festivals, shopping malls, and other venues, and charge people to interact with these babies. It's a cruel practice for many reasons, not the least of which is that the cubs are taken away from their mothers at birth and can only be used for public handling until they get they are three or four months old. After that, um, you know, they can age out and the cast offs are often sent to substandard facilities or into the pet trade. Um, more on the other end must be continually bred in order to provide a steady supply of infants to replace those who aged out. We know that a number of them uh, were sent by Joe Exotic, Mr. Tiger King himself, to a private owner in Pahrump. And it's a cycle of breeding and dumping that is at the root cause of the large surplus of captive big cats in the U.S. In addition, SB 344's requirement that USDA licensed animal exhibitors by, by just a few very reasonable conditions that go above and beyond the regulations of the Federal Animal Welfare Act, which was written decades ago and does not incorporate modern zoological industry standards, will also advance animal welfare and public safety in Nevada. So it interrupts the cub petting industry in practice and it provides continuity for most with some very reasonable ask in the interests of both animal welfare and public safety. And for those reasons, uh, we ask you to, to enact the bill. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mr. Dixon, for that comment. Um, Mr. Hardy, uh, I believe we're ready for some questions. So uh, questions from committee members about the bill language at this time. Senator Hansen. Thanks, Chair Nadi. Uh, like Warren, Warren, great to see you again. Jeff, nice to see you. Lisa, I haven't met you, but uh, thank you for your presentation today. A little bit of deja vu since we had almost the exact bill last session. A um, couple of questions. One, you guys mentioned a dozen years ago in Ohio, we had that situation. Have there been any situations in Nevada in the last dozen years? Yes, and I'll, I'll uh, Warren Hardy, for you, for your record, I'll allow my colleagues to expound. But actually, ironically, the first year we brought this forward, you might recall that there was a chimpanzee escape in southern nevada uh that the 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 animals had the animal i think one of them or was was ha had to be terminated um and I'll, I'll open it up to my other colleagues i know there are issues uh we have had other issues but i'll open it up to my colleagues to uh, to expound um there we'd be happy to provide you with a list of incidents that have taken place in nevada there have thankfully not been any um, on the scale of what happened in, in Zanesville. Um, and probably the most, well, no, the most recent dramatic one is the chimpanzee incident. Two chimps escaped in Las Vegas and one was shot and killed. There have been um, incidents with uh, a, a tiger uh, in somebody's backyard who a, a neighbor called about and was ultimately confiscated and some big cats being confiscated from some um, 
pretty miserable conditions also, I think, in Pahrump. But we can get you the, the list of incidents that we have. And be happy to. Uh, I would like to, I'd like to see that. Before, uh, and sorry to interrupt. Uh, that was uh, Miss Lisa Watney, just for the record. So. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. And then I have... Oh, I'm sorry. Andrew Hansen, one, more, one more question for Jeff. Jeff, is still there? Yes, sir. Are you guys, a lot of the things you just listed off about this kind of trade, you, used to, you guys used to all say, say the exact same thing, basically, about the rodeo industry. Uh, is the Humane Society still have a position of, of outlawing rodeo? This is Jeff Dixon. For the record, I don't. I would have to look up what our position is on the rodeo, but we are not. We don't have an active camp rodeo uh, campaign. If we do have one, this is we're our our focus is on the absolute worst practices that are being done to animals, and uh, this is our focus today. Okay, well, I got it. Just uh, traditionally, you guys were. I actually admired the fact you guys were consistent. I mean, uh, even Peta. Obviously, I'm not a big fan, but I. Always admired the fact that they were consistent. You know, if it's animal cruelty uh, to have a rodeo or to have exotic pets that you can pet, pet or whatever, they uh, they they were consistent. So I, I admire that. So I, I do know you guys did have a policy uh, of that for a long time. So well, thank you, uh, thank you, Chair Donati. Uh, thank you. May I, may I address that well, just briefly? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Hardy. Thank you. Uh, the, the only thing I would add is, is that, you know, I think the Humane Society of the United States, it, it, I think it's careful. I think we need to be careful to distinguish between the Humane Society of the United States and some other organizations. I, I will be honest uh, that when I took this client on several years ago, I took them on for this issue only because it was something I completely agreed in, agreed on. But I was a little nervous about whether my interests uh, across the board would, lie, would, would, would uh, align with theirs. And I can tell you, I have I have found this organization to be nothing but reasonable, thoughtful, uh, conscious uh, of all the all the, the sporting activities and other things that occur in Nevada. And the, I will just say there are a lot of organizations I don't believe I could represent, but I have not found that to be the case here. And I've had a very happy uh, relationship with this organization. Warren, uh, you and I go way back, and I remember when you represented the Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife. With the Humane Society of the United States, the nice thing is, too, I'm sure their checks don't bounce. So that's a good thing. I, I haven't checked on that, Senator, but uh, we haven't gotten any notification. Uh, thank you, Senator Hansen and Mr. Hardy, for that comment. Um, <laughs> any questions from the committee members at this time before we proceed? Uh, Vice Chair Scheibel. Yes, thank you. I am curious where the enumerated list came from of the dangerous wild animals that are included in this bill. Um, I'll allow Ms. Watney to address that, but that, that list, uh, Warren Hardy again for the record, Mr. Chairman, um, that list has been developed, uh, frankly, over the course of the past several years. Um, and, and I think it's important to understand that animals are on that list that are not only physically physically dangerous, but also can spread disease and that, and that sort of thing. But that, that list was a lot larger when we started, but uh, we have, we have uh, reduced it down to we, what we would call the most dangerous of the dangerous. And, and I apologize to Ms. Watney for interrupting, but I'll allow her to, if it's okay with the chair, to respond as well. Um, no, this is Lisa Watney with the Humane Society of the United States and um, and Warren answered that. That's, that's so, it. I'm specifically curious uh, why there are no reptiles on the list. Um, Lisa Watney with the Humane Society of the United States. Um, we did inc originally include reptiles on the list. That was done in error because as um, the Nevada Department of Wildlife pointed out to us, the reptiles that we had included were already um, banned or prohibited by state law. So there was no need for them to be in the bill and out, out they came. Okay, I didn't realize that. Um, I think that's my only question. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Scheibel. Any other questions? Senator Brooks. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Donate. Um, I too was curious why I did not see the boom slang on this bill for the third time in a row. Um, this is the third time I've, I've heard this bill. And, uh, but I, I have a question. Is there anything in here 
that would um, uh, get in the way or, or make it impossible for film companies, professional film companies um, that would be filming in Nevada um, to, to have any of these protected animals um, if they were properly licensed and all that. Is there anything in here that would keep a film company from being able to make a production in the state that, that had any of these animals in it? Um, I, I can answer that. Lisa Watney with the Humane Society of the United States. Um, anyone who provides animals for movies or any kind of filming um, is required to be licensed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And um, as was discussed previously, the USDA licensees, um, Class C exhibitor license, licensees are exempt. So as long as they can meet those few additional requirements, liability insurance, um, uh, escape plans, haven't had any, you know, especially horrible citations in the previous three years, they will have no trouble at all in um, making movies or any other kind of filming with this specific list of animals. And, and if I may follow up, um, it is so, you know, there's some big filmmaking states in, in, in the United States, like California and, and Georgia is, is becoming a big one. And, and do they have the, the same types of standards in place? Um, California is an example, you know, Hollywood. Uh, do they have the same um, standards in place that, that you're proposing in this bill? Um, it's, it's all over the map as far as I, I wish regulations and laws were consistent across the U.S. They aren't. I would need to look at California's law um, closely to answer that question, and I'd be happy to do that and get back to you. Some places um, contain a specific exemption for uh, movie you know, production companies, even though it isn't necessary because of the USDA exemption. Um, but they, they have done that just to um, feel, I guess, extra sure that the movie production companies weren't going to be affected. Thank you. I appreciate that. If I could add to that, Mr. Chair, I was, we'll certainly get that information back to you, Senator, because it's an important question for Nevada. Um, and, and these are the kinds of questions we feel that, that because of the, the gaming industry as well. We're very unique in that regard. So we, we want to make sure that we don't do anything to interfere with that. All I would add to that, Mr. Chair, is what we're doing with this legislation is going to going from essentially no law to what I would uh, categorize as a very weak law. Um, but it's something and it's a start. And, and, and we want to make sure that what we do going forward doesn't impact the good actors in the gaming industry and the entertainment industry. Those, those, those folks that you mentioned, Senator Brooks, Mr. Chair, are exactly the kind of folks we're trying to protect in this who have the certifications and are the good actors in the industry. Uh, so I would just add that, Mr. Chair, that I think when we do a final analysis, we'll realize that uh, we now have a law. It's not going to be the strongest in the country for sure. But I think it, uh, we've accepted the fact that it's going to make sense to move move forward uh, slowly and strategically. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Any last minute questions before we pursue the testimony? Senator Gurkitia. Uh, I think I know the answer, but uh, on, on a number of these species, uh, it, it says uh, that have been bred in captivity. I assume that's because you, it's illegal to own a, a wild a mountain lion or a black bear. That is truly wild, uh, but then so it has in here. They have been that have, it's illegal to own one that has been bred in captivity. Um, I can answer that, Lisa Watney, for the Humane Society of the United States. That is, was included at the request of the Nevada Department of Wildlife because, for exactly that reason, since those few species that are mentioned that way are native to the state, and therefore regulated by NDAO. So just to make that distinction, the issue of them being bred in captivity was put in there to clarify. That makes sense. I, I know exactly what you're saying, but I, again, I question whether if you find a black bear cub, I know it's illegal to have, but they have been kept and raised in the state for a long time. 
by a black bear, or, you know, maybe a lion cub, bobcat. It's illegal to own them, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. Hey, Pete, you got to sit back a little bit because we didn't hear a word you just said. You're, and I'm pushing the can you hear your microphone. My, okay. Yeah, my, my mic seems to, and maybe that's it. Maybe I'm putting a hand on it. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, and I did hear you, so. Okay, all right, you heard me. <laughs> pieces, so anyway, I just want to, I want to warn you, Pete. Thank you, Senator Hansen and Senator Gregorio. Uh, any last minute question before we proceed to testimony? I don't see any, so, oh, Vice Chair Scheibel. I do, and I'm sorry, I had this question earlier and I forgot to ask it. Um, it's very specific, but in section six on page three, we have a, defini a definition of law enforcement officer that I don't think matches all of the other definitions of law enforcement officer in the NRS. I'm just wondering if that's on purpose because we're talking about wild animals or if this might be something that we could um, bring into compliance with the rest of statute. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Scheibel. Um, Mr. Hardy, if you want, or anyone can answer that, but I also, we also have a uh, legal counsel who we, if we need to, uh, Ms. Watney, you want to answer that? Um, yeah, Lisa Watney with the Humane Society of the United States. Uh, this definition of law enforcement officer was drafted by Nevada Department of Wildlife. Um, we had it was a little bit different last year, and this, these, how it appears now, reflects the changes that were requested by NDAO. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Any last minute questions? Senator Hanson. Thanks, Chair. Actually, I just wanted to help Jeff out. I looked it up. The position of the Humane Society of the United States is, quote, the Humane Society opposes rodeos as they are commonly organized since they typically cause torment and stress to animals, expose them to pain, injury, or even death, and encourage an insensitivity to an acceptance of the inhumane treatment of animals in the name of sport. So just want to get that on the record, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Hanson, for that clarification. All right, I don't see any other last minute questions. So let's go ahead and proceed to testimony. Uh, before we go to the phone lines, I just want to comment that while I wasn't here in 2017, I see that this bill is very assembly, uh, similar to Assembly Bill 238 of the 2017 session that was sponsored by then uh, Assemblywoman Lee, Leslie Cohen. Um, and I just wanna mention that uh, as a reminder, we will be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each. Testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions and submit more comprehensive testimony in writing. Uh, BPS, is there anyone on the line wishing to provide support testimony for SB 344 at this time? Thank you, Chair Donate. To testify in support on Senate Bill 344, please press star nine now to take your place in the And BPS, before we proceed, I just want to reiterate that we will be limiting uh, testimony to 30 minutes on each segment. Um, and I strongly encourage people to stick to the two minutes because I will cut them off. And if they wanna go beyond that, then they're more than welcome to send us uh, testimony in writing. So please proceed. Thank you, Chair. Caller with the last three digits of 109, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. For the record, Justin Harrison, J-U-S-T-I-N-H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N, representing Clark County. Uh, we're here today in support of SB 344 as this builds upon the county's current ordinances regulating exotic and wild animals found in Chapter 10.18 of Clark County Code. Um, we'd like to thank Senator Orenshaw for bringing the bill forward and we would urge your support. Thank you. Caller with the last three digits, 911. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller with the last three digits, 911. You may proceed with your testimony. Uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, 
I'm Karen Lane, K-A-R-E-N-L-A-Y-N-E, former president of the Las Vegas Valley Humane Society, which is a separate entity from HSUS. I might want to point that out. I, we just want to uh, indicate our support of this bill and uh, certainly do hope that this committee will uh, pass this out of committee as uh, since this has been heard uh, many times um, during uh, these sessions. Thank you so much. As a reminder, we are currently on support testimony on Senate Bill 344. If you have recently joined the call and would like to provide testimony in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in support at this time. Uh, thank you so much, EPS. Uh, let's give it a few more seconds before we proceed to opposition. Certainly, thank you, Chair. Once again, we are currently accepting support testimony on Senate Bill 344. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 093. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller with the last three digits, 093. Please proceed with your testimony. Hello, my name is Linda Sugasa. And and I'm the well, Hello, my name is Linda Sugasa, and I'm the founder and director of Safe Haven Wildlife Sanctuary in Imlay, Nevada. Um, I am supporting uh, SB 344 to restrict the private possession of dangerous wild animals. I am here to offer my organization full support for this bill. In addition to rescue and rehabilitation of indigenous wildlife, we provide permanent placement for wildlife, wild animals in need. We respond to requests for assistance from state and federal agencies, law enforcement, veterinarians, and citizens. We provide permanent homes to 33 exotic cats, ranging from 25-pound bobcats to 500-pound tigers and African lions, all that were um, former pets. Safe Haven takes our role as a sanctuary very seriously. We are accredited by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, an organization whose goal is to validate sanctuary sustainability as well as to ensure the highest standards of animal care and safety. We do not breed, buy, sell, or trade any of the animals placed in our facility, nor are our animals for hire. Our no-contact policy ensures the safety for our staff and animals we care for. Everyday people yield to the temptation to purchase a big cat or other un, um, unusual non-native species and then quickly discover that they are ill-equipped to provide for the animal's needs. The outcome is really good for the animals, many of whom have been abandoned, killed, reg, uh, re, re, um, and then suffering for miserable and unsafe conditions in backyard cages or confiscated by authorities. The life of cruelty, abuse, and neglect that is endured by many exotic pets is tragically illustrated by one of our residents, White Tiger Clarence, who had been previously owned in rural Ohio. Clarence, Clarence's owner had moved him into a small 20 by 30 foot cage shared with three other tigers, one who attacked him. Not knowing what to do with him, he then moved him into a tiny cage inside of a pole barn where he had just enough room to pace a small area and lie down. Since 2000, Zanesville, Ohio incident, when a private owner released 56 big cats and bears into neighboring communities prior to committing suicide, the state of Ohio enacted strict regulations regarding the private ownership of big cats. Unable or unwilling to meet these regulations, he released, um, he surrendered Clarence, who now resides in a safe haven, 10,000 square foot habitat with enclosure enhancements that meet the physical and psychological needs of a captive tiger and guaranteed lifelong care. 
Big cats are very expensive to care for. Safe Haven will only accept new animals if we're sure they are financially and otherwise able to provide them with lifelong care. So although we are asked to take numerous big cats every year, often we have to say no. We need Nevada to stop being a dumping ground because of people moving into the state with exotics to bypass other states with bans in place. Just recently, a notorious facility in Oregon known for handling and breeding tigers was about to lose... BPS, next caller, please. Thank you, Chair. Caller with the last three digits, 457. Please press star six to unmute now. Caller with the last three digits, 457. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Yes, uh, my name is Scott Shoemaker, and I'm actually to uh, oppose uh, SB 344, uh, I guess I jumped a gun, but I'll go ahead and start to address uh, Senator Brooks' thing on film companies' prohibitions. The no contact provision of SB 344 will prohibit uh, even professionals from co uh, coming into contact with the animals listed. And hence, and also anybody uh, working with these animals will be prohibited from the, the contact and such lose jobs since there's no contact and that would actually make the animals more unsafe. Uh, also, as far as Nevada having no laws, 13 out of 17 counties have ordinances regulating exotic animals. And in addition to that, the cities have their own ordinances. For example, uh, Henderson and North Las Vegas both have exotic animal bans. This is basically a ban and confiscation bill and concentrates, concentrates on setting the conditions for um, confiscating animals. It also circumvents and conflicts with NDA regulations, does not, does not address public safety. There's no caging standards for the animals listed. Um, it doesn't make any sense on, because uh, there's no criteria listed for designating a species as a dangerous wild animal. You've got primates that are, you know, anywhere from one pound to five pounds requiring $250,000 liability insurance. And oh, by the way, you cannot even go up and pet that, but I can walk up to somebody's 150 pound Rottweiler and pet it just fine, and they don't need any insurance. And the, the uh, you mentioned Zanesville. What they don't mention there is that they let all the animals out, only six got off the property and nobody was injured. Okay and it was already illegal at the time. And uh, I did in, input um, very restrictive laws, but the latest cheetah attack in Ohio says it, it can happen anywhere, no matter what your laws say. And it's an AZA facility, which uh, would also be exempt anyway. Uh, this bill is also retroactive with the conditions for keeping the animals. I know at least 10 animals that would be immediately sure. confiscated. Okay, thank you. Uh, let the record reflect that that was in opposition testimony. Um, BPS, do we have anyone else willing to uh, testify and support before we move to opposition? Thank you so much, Chair. As a reminder, we are currently on support testimony on Senate Bill 344. If you have recently joined the call and would like to provide support testimony, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 263. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Thank you. Um, Tina Brandon Abitangelo, T-I-N-A-B-R-A-N-D-O-N-A-B-B-A-T-A-N-G-E-L-O. -E Good afternoon, Chairman Donate and Madam Vice President, um, Vice, excuse me, Vice Chair Shinobu. Thank you for your time today. My name is Dr. Tina Brandon Abitangelo. I am here today in support of SB 344 for the following reasons. 
I'm a human dentist, a, a dental school professor, but most importantly, regarding this matter, I'm a volunteer with the Peter and Emily Foundation. We are a nonprofit organization that provides dental care to captive and exotic animals. I have been with this foundation for over 12 years. This foundation has worked on over 500 animals. We've gone on over 97 missions, been to over 27 different sanctuaries throughout the United States and internationally. And we have performed over 1,300 dental procedures. We treat their dental disease so that they can eat and ultimately survive. I speak as a person who has been in the trenches along with many other committed veterinarians and dentists that are highly trained to provide this type of care to these exotic animals. And I have seen firsthand what happens when these animals are no longer needed and are discarded. This is the end of the road for these animals. And you've, you've all seen this Tiger King. You've all known they've been private pets and they've, um, they will show attraction. But unfortunately, I have seen constant trends in these animals' mouths. Um, numerous cases of drill down canines to the nerves, which are intimidating teeth, and they're vital to their survival, yet these teeth have been intentionally reconstructed to inhibit their full potential so that the owners and the trainers don't, um, they can feel safe. There's fractured canines from cage biting, blunt trauma to the head caused by broken teeth and sometimes loss of eyes. I worked on a seven-year-old white tiger from Nevada from a, a show on the strip that had been declawed and all of his canines were drilled down to the nerve. Both of these acts are illegal um, and they cannot be performed on exotic cats. And his dental visit consisted of four root canals, extractions, and we can't keep an, an, an animal under um, for more than three hours because it's too damaging to their internal organs. And the history of these animals in these sanctuaries, there's so many stories and they're heartbreaking to hear. Um, but I'm here today in support of this bill because I have seen firsthand what happens when these animals have once been used for profit that are now confiscated, surrendered, or rescued from these unhealthy environments. And no matter how hard we try to give them the best intentions with natural habitats, they're never fully replicated. Um, so they are dependent on us for their survival and never can they go back into the wild. So if I support this bill, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to call me, email me, text me. I will be happy to share any knowledge I have with you about my missions. And I'm sending over my letter with some photos of some canines of the white tiger for you to see. Thank you very much. As a reminder, we are currently on support testimony on Senate Bill 344. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in support at this time. Thank you, VPS. Uh, next, we will move to opposition. Uh, is there anyone on the line wishing to provide testimony in opposition for SB 344? Thank you, Chair. To testify in opposition on Senate Bill 344, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 504. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Tim Stoffel, T-I-M-S-T-O-F-F-E-L. I'm speaking in opposition to SB 344 because of the, you know, the, this bill is not fully understood by and not being uh, identified as the real dangers that it's causing. First of all, a total ban on private ownership is a bad idea because we need more people breeding these cats. Despite what was being said about a uh, surplus, there's actually a shortage of these cats. We have had a great deal of trouble trying to find new big cats for our zoo uh, because nobody's breeding anymore because these laws are proliferating all over the country. Uh, we need regulation, not bans. Uh, number two, the standards that have been raised for the, for the USDA Class C exhibitors are so high that, uh, you know, just, you know, just reading all the conditions and stuff they have to meet, you know, we're to a situation now where, you know, even a minor violation would cause immediate confiscation of our animals at Sierra Safari Zoo. Uh, I don't think this is, this is very good policy and stuff like this. And it's just, you know, what this is, is a giant witch hunt to try to uh, find an excuse to shut down the zoo. Cause this bill really isn't about protecting the public or protecting the animals. It's about finding another way to eliminating these animals from human population. That's what the Humane Society of the United States and PETA are all about. Uh, 
Furthermore, the, the ban on contact is bad because it makes it very difficult for the keepers to take care of them because this ban extends to animal keepers. It isn't just the public and stuff like that. Uh, you know, this is just, it's just, you know, a gross overreach. The legislature is not an animal, you know, is not an expert on that. They should not be passing rules like this. This is something that should be done, you know, if it was going to be done at all, it should be done by end now. In any case, in any case, uh, we have a very definite, legitimate need for better, you know, conservation and stuff like this. It involves all sorts of animal owners, and the, you know, this bill is just going to—it's going to make it impossible for anybody to start a new facility in the state, and it's going to make it impossible for anybody to, con, you know, to continue doing. You know, it's going to make it very difficult to continue doing what you're doing because one slip up and they're at your door to do, do, you know, take your animals away. Uh, so this bill, this bill, you know, I'm going to be. I've, I've submitted uh, additional comments on all the areas of this bill that you know are concerned. Uh, this bill does not need to be law in the state. We already have some laws to, you know, that are set adequate. We just haven't had any incidents in the state. I don't think there's going to be incidents. We are not being overrun by uh, people with big cats in their backyard. Please do not let this bill become a law. Thank you. Caller with the last three digits, 020. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Dirk Arthur, D I R K A R T H U R. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Committee, for allowing my participation today. I'm a Las Vegas magician and I perform with tigers and other exotic animals. I'm also a card holder of IATSE Union Local 720, and my show provides great union jobs uh, for our community uh, when we perform. Now, I certainly respect any law or agenda that protects animals, but I really don't see this one doing it. The restrictions are so great that just getting a small write-up from the USDA would lead to a compensation. We are not grandfathered in it anyway. Uh, I mean, sure, for a few moments, we can keep our business, but it would just be so easy uh, to, to not comply with any of these strict regulations. I don't find this um, reasonable by any means. And now, for instance, if it was something where if one was convicted of a crime by the USDA or a crime of animal cruelty, then that would be reasonable to uh, confiscate animals. But anyway, for these reasons, and also the fact that this is bad for tourism and bad for any shows or any zoos that have animals, I'm strongly opposed uh, to this bill. Uh, thank you for your time. Caller with the last three digits, 643. Please press star six now to unmute. Thank you, caller. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller with the last three digits, 643, please proceed with your testimony. Hi, my name is Devin Clausen, D-E-V-A-N, and my last name is C-L-A-W-S-O-N. And I strongly oppose SB 344. I do ask that you guys review my written testimony as it's a little long to be reading. But a few things I'd like to point out is that there's already current city and county regulations that have been doing a pretty good job. And that also that there hasn't ever been any legal dangerous situations in the state of Nevada with animals in 20 years that I can find. I also wanted to point out this bill would require owners to have to get a hold of authority three days before transport. And how would that work if your animal is in dire need of a vet? This, to me, is kind of an inhumane. Color, please proceed with your testimony. Okay. I just wanted to also point out that it's only recognizing AZA accreditations, and there are other groups such as ZAA and GFAS and uh, that um, there's no due process and it takes a lot of rights away and that you guys, and that also it's been 
pointed out about Tiger King, that's like pointing out life based on real housewives or born in the wild. It's a reality TV show, but it's not exactly based on what everything is going on in, any, in all states. Bringing up something that happened 10 years ago in a state that's not Nevada, uh, thank goodness it's not Nevada, but Nevada has not had these issues. So I just would strongly encourage that if you are really wanting to know your current exotic animal situation in your state, I would implore you to please go and visit some of the facilities and even talk to exotic animal owners and, and meet with them. I'd be more than happy to talk with, with you guys about my experiences and what I've learned and what my facilities are and my animals. And also that, um, I'm sorry, I lost my, I lost my phone. Anyways, I would just employ that you would please look at my testimony and reach out to some of us in Nevada before accepting this. I also just wanted to point out that this was presented kind of last minute and before normal deadlines. And I think it needs a lot more review. And especially when it's made the statement that this will not Agreed. affect those Agreed. that are doing shows. Oh. I'm so nervous I lost my computer. DPS, next caller, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair. Caller with the last three digits, 011. Please press star six now to unmute. Caller with the last three digits, 011. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and maybe. Caller with the last three digits, 011, please proceed with your testimony. Caller with the last three digits, 011, please press star six now to unmute. And I think we will move to the next caller. One moment, please. Caller with the last three digits, 011. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Moving to the next caller. Caller with the last three digits, 625. Please press star six now to unmute. Caller with the last three digits, 625. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is John Potash and I oppose SB 344 again for the sixth time. This, this bill is the sixth attempt that I've personally been involved in fighting against, some form of exotic animal ban brought exclusively by a national special interest groups, not introduced by a Nevada agency. There have not been any significant events in Nevada to warrant a need for this legislation in the previous 12 years or even 50 plus years in the state. The few incidents of people being injured by exotic animals have only involved people voluntarily taking that risk or a recognized and accepted occupational hazard. Sure, you've heard of a few events that have happened over the years pertaining to exotic animals. There seems to always be a bad apple no matter what the subject matter. In all of these cases, existing laws and infrastructure have been more than sufficient to handle those outliers. We are not supposed to punish all the good people because of the actions of a couple bad. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. Once again, this has nothing more, this is nothing more than a special interest group trying to force its extreme ideology on a small group of innocent and responsible citizens and will only harm these citizens and their animals while doing nothing extra to prevent criminals from breaking the already existing laws. Due to the uh, recent introduction of this after the legislative calendar deadlines, I might add, 
and its rush to a meeting, we haven't had a chance to thoroughly review this, but we've already noticed many significant issues of dire concern, uh, many which have been noted already, and I will also be sending an email shortly detailing additional ones. But in short, this bill has many extremely vague and subjective clauses, which would allow for enforcement actions against keepers for any non-legitimate reasons offers extreme penalties for minor issues not even involving animal care, and in some cases denies citizens their due process. It even gives special exemptions to one organization while ex excluding all others, and even mandates situations that could promote animal cruelty. Thank you for your time, and I urge your opposition to SB 344. Caller with the last three digits, 011. We'll try one more time. Can you please slowly state and spell your name for the record? You will have two minutes and may begin. Zuzana Kuko, Z U Z A N A K U K O L. Yes, ma'am. Please proceed with your testimony. I am Henza Nevada Animal Owner and I oppose SB 344 because it is a bad anti-animal welfare bill that most locals don't support. I run federally, state and county license, license exotic animal facility that actually houses many animals confiscated from Tiger King characters and other high profile cases. So if this was a good bill, trust me, I would support it. But this is a horrible bill. This bill will not improve public safety or, or animal welfare. Just the opposite. Nobody died by exotics in Nevada in the last 20 years. We already have enough laws. They just need to be enforced. The bill would make it almost impossible for a facility to keep helping the government agencies transporting and housing the animals. This is like a confiscation and euthanasia manual, manual of innocent animals. Having to give three-day notice to transport very sick animals to the veterinary might be a certain death sentence in emergency situations. Having animals confiscated for simple six feet in 60 seconds item is insane. This is guilty until proven innocent bill that would result in expensive lawsuits for the cities and counties that would be forced to enforce it. To so draw parallels, imagine being written for one of your five dogs, not being licensed. You license the dog the next day, but a few days later, animal control shows up and confiscates all of your animals. Or traffic, traffic cops give you a ticket for broken taillight. You fix it the next day, but a few days later, all of your cars and driver licenses are confiscated by Nevada State Patrol. Or one of your kids skips school, you reprimand the kid, but then child animal services show up and take all your kids. In unfair except AZA zoos, the last wicked attack happened in Ohio. In AZA facility, this bill would exempt. It would kill many union and non-union jobs, which is a horrible idea, considering we are still in the pandemic situation, and any job is a good job. It was introduced after the regular and extended deadline, so I was wondering why don't the rules apply to sponsors of this bill? This bill was late and should be dead on arrival. Thank you. As a reminder, we are currently in opposition testimony on Senate Bill 344. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in opposition, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 666. Please press star six now to unmute. Thank you, caller with the last three digits, 666. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hello, my name is Keith Evans, K-E-I-T-H, E-V-A-N-S, and I'm opposed to SB 344. Uh, there's a whole bunch of problems just the way it's worded. The 72 hours is a big problem. Giving AZA exemptions, if you're going to make a law that covers everybody, don't exempt anybody. Number three is I live in Nevada in Clark County for 50 years now almost. The laws are here, but it didn't prevent Jeff Lowe from the Tiger King of bringing animals in illegally. And if you don't address the border where you have check stations, you won't be able to correct that. So you're not going to protect the animals or the people.
if you want to make laws, that's great. I'm all for it. But make sure that they're not arbitrary and capricious. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Caller with the last three digits, 101. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller with the last three digits, 101. Please proceed with your testimony. Hi, this is Steve Higgs from Sierra Safari Zoo. Uh, we'd like to let you know that we're opposing this bill and we have approximately over 400 hours of time in working with big cats, 40 years working all together. And we also uh, don't believe that the way that it's stated in this, this whole thing is going to help us in any way, shape or form. I agree with the fact that giving us 72 hours to give notification is definitely gonna be a problem as far as getting big cats or any exotic animal to a veterinary service. We've, we've been doing this for, like I said, over 40 years. We've had every type of big cat there is, and we have not seen in any situation where these animals have been a problem. Our facility is built really, really well. We've been a USDA license for the last 40 years as well and haven't had any issues. And I think that going after everybody and trying to pass rules where if we get some mice turds laying around somewhere and you get notified about it, that that can cause you to have your animals taken away from you. There's just too many situations there where it's not going to work for anybody and it's gonna cause all their animals to be taken and potentially euthanized. Even though most of them are on the endangered list and we have to be aware of the fact how many there are. I know that We've had a 16 year old girl who's come to see our facility and has said that she is so glad that she has been able to see a tiger where she will be able to tell her kids that she saw one when it was alive. And that's the kind of situation we're up against is that so many of these animals are gonna be gone. And we have thousands of people coming through our zoo at all times. And I'm sure all the legislatures would not want all those thousands of people to be calling them up and really upset because of some reason this law is passed and our animals are taken away, which they love so much and come to see at all times. So we definitely oppose it and we'd love to have you come and see us and talk a little bit more and understand really what's going on, what really needs to be done. Thank you. Once again, we are currently in opposition testimony on Senate Bill 344. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in opposition, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in opposition at this time. Thank you, VPS. Uh, last but not least, is there anyone wishing to provide testimony in neutral on SB 344? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neutral on Senate Bill 344, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 196. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Chairman Donate and members of the Senate Natural Resources Committee. I'm Eric Spratley, E-R-I-C-S-P-R-A-T-L-E-Y, the Executive Director of the Nevada Sheriffs and Chiefs Association, here in neutral to Senate Bill 344. We were signed in as opposed but from the presentation on the bill and prior extensive work with Senator Warren Hardy, I'm confident that a few of the procedural concerns we had will be answered and or addressed and we will arrive at a place of support for the bill. We agree with regulation and oversight for large exotic and dangerous wild animals for the safety of the public we serve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Once again, we are currently in neutral testimony on Senate Bill 344. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in neutral, 
please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no, no more callers in neutral at this time. Thank you so much, PPS. Uh, Mr. Warren Hardy, do you have any last minute comments before we close the hearing? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you for taking the time to, to, to review this issue. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with the gaming industry and, and I will call my friend, uh, Mr. Spratley and, and make sure his issues addressed as well. As he indicated, we've worked on this together for many sessions. So thank you, Chair and committee. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Hardy. Uh, I will go ahead and close the hearing on SB 344. Again, for the public that is watching, the committee will not be taking an action on SB 344 today, but it may bring it back for a future work session. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and before we close out, proceed to public comment. I will now cover public comment. Uh, please remember to limit your comments to two, to two minutes. BPS staff, is there anyone wishing to provide public comment at this time? Thank you so much, Chair. We are currently on public comment. If you have recently joined the call and would like to provide public comment, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 292, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Yeah, my name is Joshua Cower, C-O-W-A-R-T. Um, I tried to uh, get through for the opposition, but something it never, uh, you guys never picked up for, for my phone on that. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, state that I uh, support what everyone else uh, is arguing in regards to uh, this bill and that it is not uh, in the best interest of the animals. This is a uh, no, this is a no pet uh, agenda uh, put out by uh, HSUS and PETA. And then I would also just like to state uh, in remembrance of Ken Foose that uh, since as a great uh, advocate uh, for animals here in Nevada, um, that he's still uh, still with us and we're still in this fight for him. That's all. Uh, thank you, sir, for your comment. Just a reflection that this is once again uh, public comment and the hearing on SB 344 has already ended. So just for anyone else that wishes to provide. Uh, BPS, are there any other callers looking to provide public comment at this time? Caller 504, please proceed with your testimony. Okay, again, this is Tim Stoffel calling back, T-I-M-S-T-O-F-F-E-L. I just want to quickly add that it seems to me be dirty pool that they're once again going to make a carve out for the gaming industry. If you're going to pass a law like this, they shouldn't be exempt either. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. Again, as I've stated, this is not time for discussion on SB 344. That time has already passed. Uh, we are only entertaining public comment at this time. BPS, is there anyone else wishing to provide public comment? Thank you so much, Chair. As Chair Donare has stated, we are currently on public comment. If you have recently joined the call and would like to provide public comment, please press star nine now and take to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in, in for public testimony at this time. Thank you, BPS. Uh, members, any comments before we go ahead and adjourn? I don't see none. Uh, thank you for your questions, and I look forward to seeing you all on Tuesday. Our next meeting is on Tuesday, April 6th at 3.30 p.m. Uh, the, me the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you so much.